What's going on guys, Luis here. Welcome to the HM3200 Tetra Meshing. Today we're going to be looking at two ways of meshing a solid. Uh, the first way is going to be using the volume Tetra Mesher, which works directly with surface or solid geometry to automatically generate a Tetra Mesh. And also a standard Tetra Mesher which requires a surface mesh as input and then provides us a number of options to control the mesh. And finally, we are also going to check the element quality and remesh the bad ones as needed. So let's get right to it. We're going to be pulling the housing.hm model. I'm going to set the shaded geometry. So we can check our model. We are going to be going to the 3D page, Tetra Mesh panel, and then we're going to be um, using the volume Tetra Mesher uh, method first. So on enclosed volumes, we select surfs. Looking at here, we have the component cover. Uh, we're going to be using 2D type as Trias and 3D type as Tetris. And element order is going to be, we're going to be using, we're going to be using first order elements. Not going to use use curvature or proximity for now. We'll be setting a element size of 10 and send them to the current component. So we can go ahead and select these surfaces and click mesh and it's done I'm going to hide the geometry so that we can take a better look at the mesh as you can see um, this mesh right now doesn't really capture our geometry in this these um, fillets right here So we can reject as we have clicked on the model area. So what we're going to have to do is go to the delete panel and we're going to delete all of the displayed elements. Set the geometry again. Now we're going, we're going to um, change the method to right triangles. So now hypermesh we'll try to create right triangles instead of equilateral triangles. We'll select these surfaces again and mesh. Hide the component, the component cover geometry. And we can see that it has at least tried to make more right triangles in here, but not, not all of them are going to be right triangles because uh, the geometry is not fit for that. So we can reject this. We're going to delete the elements again, turn on the geometry, back to the Tetra Mesh panel. Now we're going to use the Use Curvature option which is going to allow us to better capture these curvatures in here. So we're going to set a minimum element size on these curves of 1 and keep the feature angle at 30 and the same element size um, everywhere else. Change again to trias, pick the surfaces and mesh. And wait till it's done and there we go now we can see that it has created uh, much smaller elements um, in these curved surfaces in order to capture the geometry right we could use even smaller sizes it really depends on um, 
how much you want to you want to refine it but this looks good for now for the purpose of this tutorial and now we're gonna again remesh using the use proximity option so that we can check how the mesh goes again we're gonna delete this mesh return and check the use proximity box pick the surfaces again and mesh it takes a little more time but now as we can see it's it's able to better capture uh, this area which has um, some sort of element in there and it makes a much nicer transition from small elements to the larger elements so this is what you use the use proximity option so now we're going to move on to the second part of this tutorial in which we are going to be using the tetra measure so we're not going to be dealing with the cover component anymore we're going to change to the hub component and as i have said before we have to make sure for the standard tetra measure to work that we have a we have to make sure that we have a surface mesh in an enclosed volume so that we can use that as a starting point for the tetra measure so there are two ways so i'll show two ways of checking that you have a surface mesh first we're going to go to the 3d page and element types check the 2d sub panel and select displayed elements and click review zoom in and these are all c triad tree which is a surface surface element another way to check that and make sure that you have a surface and make sure that you have a surface mesh is to use the max the mask panel so go to mask select elements by window and pick a rough window like this and select entities and mask and as we can see it is hollow inside so we have confirmed that these are 2d elements the other requirement is that these elements um, make a closed volume so to check that i'm gonna go back and unmask all to check that we go to the tool page and then edges panel select the hub component and click find edges and the display the status bar displays uh, no edges were found and select elements may enclose a volume which is exactly what we want so as of right now we are good to go with our 3d tetra meshing so let's move on so here we have two options um, fixed tri squad to tetra mesh or float tri squad to tetra mesh we're going to be going with this one um, since it will swap the diagonal of any pair of trias which uh, basically results in a better quality mesh so we select this component and but we're going to send the elements not to the current component which is cover but we're going to change it to tetris and now this is the 
Return Component and we can click Mesh. Now we can show the elements on this component and hide this just to make sure that we have Tetra elements we can use the mask panel select elements by a window and mask now we have solid elements as we wanted unmask all and return we're gonna check the quality of these elements at last so go to the tool page check elements and 3D sub panel and what we want to check in here is for the tet tetra collapse which is a normalized volume check for tetrahedros and a value of 1 for this check uh, indicates a perfect element while a value of 0 indicates a collapsed element with no volume so our criterion for this is going to be 0 0.3 and by clicking on this uh, it shows the status bar shows that three elements have failed and the minimum tetra collapse is about 0 0.2 so what we want to do is save these failed elements and go directly to the mask panel here we're going to retrieve these elements three elements added by retrieve now that we have retrieved these we're going to reverse the elements and mask them so these are the three elements that have a tetra collapse uh, smaller than 0, 0 0.3 we are going to unmask the adjacent because we're going to remash not only these elements but those adjacent to them so pick about two layers of the adjacent elements as you can see we have also reached the surface of the of the part but we don't want to remash um, the, the the surface mesh so just uncheck these on the hub now with these elements selected we can return and return again back to the tetra mesh we're going to go to the tetra remesh sub panel going to be remashing 3d elements all of these displayed elements and click remesh So the status bar says um, three volumes mashed. Now we can go back to the um, check elements to see if we have any improvements. So now we can check again the tetra collapse values by clicking here. And we see that it has increased from 0 0.2 to 0 0.25. So this was an effective uh, remash. This is it for today, guys. I hope you have learned something. And if this was valuable, valuable in any way to you, uh, leave your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.